Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back at it again. And this time today, we are going to focus on lesson two out of this book entitled Waiting for the Holy Spirit. All right. Waiting for the Holy Spirit. God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. So that's going to be our focus today, talking about the Holy Spirit. So the last lesson, um, this kind of blends in with the previous lesson where we focused on why the Holy Spirit came, looking at well, what was going on and why it came. And now that it has come, now we work, we're working on the waiting part, waiting for the Holy Spirit. So as we begin this seven-week study of the first 12 chapters of the book of Acts, we will be expanding on the Pentecost lesson we explored last week. Pentecost was just the beginning of a much larger plan God had for the expansion of his church, but it all began with waiting for the Holy Spirit, neither running ahead nor lagging behind. Today's study begins in the book of Luke to provide needed background for what we are about to study. Both the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts were written by Luke, who traveled with Paul and served as his personal physician. The book of Acts should be considered as a sequel to the gospel of Luke. All right, so that is basically there, an introduction of this lesson here and looking at what we are going to focus on. Um, today, we're looking at the Holy Spirit. All right, so let's start thinking. All right, let's gather our thoughts here and start thinking about some things. So the first question I have, what are some things that require an accompanying tool or other item in order for them to be useful? So think about things around your house that you use, but you got to have something else in order to use it an accompanying tool or other item in order for them to be useful. And so I got some pictures here. I have some batteries because in order for a flashlight to work or maybe your clock in your house, it needs a battery in order to operate. Maybe your TV remote, it needs a battery. I thought about something in the kitchen, can opener. If you brought some canned goods, you cannot open it unless you got a can opener. And also I thought about a light bulb or like a lamp. The lamp is no, is no use of the lamp if it doesn't have a light bulb, okay? So those are just some things there to get us to start thinking about things that we need, um, an accompanying tool, okay? An accompanying tool other or an item it got to have that and this in order for it to work, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of, of sense to you all, okay? Just thinking about those ideas there for a minute, thinking about those tools, those pictures there for a minute there. And so today's lesson is a reminder that the Holy Spirit's presence and power is the means needed to fulfill the mission of taking the gospel throughout the world, right? Taking the gospel throughout the world. But in order for them to take the gospel throughout the world, they needed some assistance, okay? They needed some assistance, all right? So they needed some assistance. So that's what we're going to look at now, that assistance that they needed. And so a popular saying is, good things come to those who wait. While they may not always be true, God has something good for the followers of Jesus, but they did have to wait for it. On the day of Pentecost, the followers of Jesus received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. God's timing, their waiting, helped to fulfill his mission when this gift was given to the early believers. That purpose continues to be fulfilled through spirit-filled believers today. All right, so they needed some type of assistance. So the first scripture that we're going to look at today is coming from the book of Luke. The book of Luke, the 24th chapter, 44 through the 49th verse, and I'll be using the NIV version. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. 
everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. All right. So here is Jesus giving them instructions as far as waiting, waiting on the gift, waiting on the help, some assistance. All right. So commanded to wait. Spirit's power promise. These verses are set in the evening of that first Easter Sunday. The disciples were just beginning to understand the significance of the resurrection. Earlier in the day, Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene and to some of his disciples. Then he had appeared to two of his followers as they, fought, as they walked from Jerusalem to Enemus, revealing who he was only as he blessed the meal he was eating with them. In their excitement, they hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples. So spirits promise, the spirits promise, power promise. So looking at the passage here, and then we're going to address this question here. Um, and the question I have up here so far, it says, why do Christians need the spirit's presence and power at work in their lives? All right. So let's look at the passage first, and then we're going to come back and address the question there. After his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his followers on several occasions. In this appearance recorded in Luke's gospel, Jesus reminded them of what he had taught them about the need for him to suffer on the cross. And be he began raised again to life to provide for the forgiveness of sins. His disciples were to be witnesses of Jesus to the world. But first, they needed to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father had promised to them. With the Spirit's help, the followers of Jesus had the mission, the message, and the means to fulfill their calling. On this occasion, Jesus opened their minds to understand what the scriptures have foretold about his work as the Messiah to fulfill God's plan for the redemption of humankind. Jesus' reference to the laws of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms includes all of what today is known as the Old Testament. Each of these three divisions contain prophecies related to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. The apostles were firsthand witnesses of Jesus' ministry and resurrection. Their mission was to proclaim the good news throughout the earth, with Jerusalem as the starting point. The message was of the need for people to repent, to receive the forgiveness of sins. The means to fulfill the mission of proclaiming the message would be the power and work of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit's presence and power in the lives of believers were it was a promise from the Father. All right, it was a promise. So why do Christians need the Spirit's presence and power at work in their lives. Why is this necessary? Why do they need the Spirit's presence and the power? Why do they need both of those? And from thinking and looking at this right here, a Christian needs God's Spirit and presence and power on a daily basis. Because as a reminder, we live in a sinful world. We are surrounded by sin on a constant basis. And so we have to have or need his presence there to wheel us in to the right direction. All right. It is there to guide us. It is there to lead us down the right path. Okay. And so we need the spirit's presence. Okay, we need this. This is not an option for us. This is something that we do need. We have to have it. And then at the same time with his presence, we do need his power at work because it might be a day or two where we are challenged. We might be going through a struggle, some trials and tribulations. And that is when we need the power of the Holy Spirit to step in and to help us, to give us that strength 
to maybe give us some comfort or whatever it is that we're dealing with, that's when the Holy Spirit will step in and to help us, okay? So yes, Christians do need this on a uh, daily basis. We need the Spirit's presence and we need the power at work in, their, in our lives on a daily basis, okay? So the next part of this section here talks about spirit's power needed. Spirit's power needed. And now we're going to look at the book of Acts now. So let's look at the book of Acts, chapter 1, 4 through 8. Let's look at this scripture here. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. All right? So spirit's power needed. Spirit's power needed. So in the passage here, it says, Jesus focused on final instructions that would help prepare his disciples for their mission of proclaiming the kingdom of God. The keynote of his teaching was their need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. With the power of the Spirit at working them and through them, they will be witnesses of Jesus wherever they went. While they were naturally curious as to God's plan for the future of the Jewish nation, they were to focus instead on the mission of taking the gospel to the nations. So this is what God instructed them to do. This was a command. This was an order that he told them that they needed to do, which was to wait, which was to wait on the gift, on the promise. All right. And so while there was a great mission assigned to the disciples, Jesus instructed them to remain in Jerusalem until they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist had baptized people in water. The disciples will receive the baptism in the spirit John has spoken of to be empowered for service. The apostles asked Jesus about the restoration of Israel as a sovereign nation. While they may seem out of place, they would have known that an outpouring of the spirit was tied to restoration, restoration of Israel and prophecies related to the last days. Jesus gently redirected their attention to the task at hand. God, in his time, will fulfill the promise of restoring the rule of God to Israel, but they were to be his witnesses as they took the gospel to the ends of the earth. Christians can get caught up trying to decipher end-time events and fail to stay on mission. Disciples of Jesus are to go with the gospel to all nations. It is telling that the Greek word for witness is the word we get martyr from the power to stand for Christ as his followers and proclaim the gospel even when facing opposition comes only from being full of the Holy Spirit. All right. So my question here, how should knowing these are the last days affect how Christians respond to the mission of taking the gospel to the ends of the earth? Knowing these things, Knowing that we are living in the last days, how should that affect our response with this mission of taking the gospel to the ends of the earth? One thing, it should be of urgency to us. We shouldn't just be passive about it, be laid back. Oh, I do it when I feel like it or whatever. No, we should do it with urgency. OK, because it said here, how should knowing these are the last days? That means that we are running out of time. And at the same time, you don't know how much time we got left. So you should do it with urgency. OK, with haste um, at a fast rate. We shouldn't do it at a slow pace. OK, because it did say at the last days. And once again, 
we don't know how much more time we actually have. Okay, so we should go out and take the gospel to the ends of the earth with urgency. And that's exactly what Paul was doing during his time in biblical days. He went out. He didn't waste any time. He went out with urgency to spread the gospel throughout the world with urgency. And that's how we should be today in our time. Okay, because we got a lot of things going on in our time and we shouldn't just be sitting back, folding our hands and, you know, looking around and, you know, maybe waiting on the next person to do it. No. All right. We should do it with urgency. All right. And so that is concluding part one, commanded to wait commanded so remember this was a command that came from god so the spirit's power was promised so jesus gave them a promise and when you look up the word the meaning of promise it's an assurance that whatever they say that they're going to do they're going to do it okay they're going to arrange for it to be done it's an assurance it you know it's a promise that they are going to do it it's guaranteed and that's what Jesus told them, that y'all re are receiving this promise, okay? But at the same time, they must have patience because he did told them to wait. He did told them to wait throughout it. And so that is something that the disciples had to work on. People still got to work on that today with patience. And when you look up the meaning of patience is to, to tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. OK, and so that is something that from time to time we do have to be patient about certain things without getting upset, without getting angry. And that's what God was instructing them to do. They were commanded to wait. They know that the promise was there. And they knew that at the same time, <clears throat> by them going out and preaching the gospel throughout the world, they needed some assistance. And that's when the Holy Spirit is going to step in and be their God, be their lead, be there for them, you know, as their assistant. All right. And so the next time we will focus on part two, worshiping and waiting, worshiping and waiting.